So over the last three months, we have been comparing a 40 minute gym program versus a 20 minute. I've been doing a 20 minute gym session, whereas Ross has been doing a 40 minute, which has essentially doubled what I've done. Particularly we want to just identify whether doing double 20 minutes is more efficient. Would you see double the gains? And interestingly, through our gym program, we found out some epically curious results that I think a lot of people question what they're doing in the gym. I'm Hugo. I'm Ross. Over the years we've been uh, undertaking various expeditions and adventures. A lot of what we do is discovering something new, whether that's out in remote locations around the world, or more recently what we've been doing is trying to find out what works best in the gym over a 12-week study. Because we're twins, we can directly compare one fitness regime versus another, or one diet versus another. So the measurements we took before, um, were on the Virgin Active's body stat machines, body weight, muscle mass, fat mass, and fat percentage. And that gave us the average profile. Tests included one rep max for bench, maximum pull-ups, maximum press-ups, VO2 sub-maximal, and deadlift. And at the end we repeated those tests so then we could compare the performance uplift and differences between the 40 and the 20. Every time we went into the gym, we went on the body track machines, so every single day we had a blueprint of how our bodies were reacting to the 40 minutes versus 20 minutes. When we worked out, we were doing the main lifts, deadlifts, squats, bench press, push, pull, rotate, um, and obviously lots of stretching mobility. A mixture of heavy-ish weights, 50% of our one rep max, mm -hmm. and lots of body weight. Our workouts are simple. Um, we're not professional athletes, but we are fairly fit. On our expeditions, we do lose a huge amount of body conditioning, so these simple programs do allow us to kind of gently get back into health and fitness. An example of one of our days was barbell hip thrusts, followed by dumbbell overhead press with a squat, followed by mountain climbers, and then into some core work. We repeated that four times. That usually took about 18 to 20 minutes, and then I would repeat that. The advantages and disadvantages of a 40 minute versus 20 minute program. Well, for me, on the 20 minutes, when you're first starting out, 20 minutes for the first month is absolutely spot on with how your body's reacting, because your body takes time to react to how you're your training. I always have the motivation to do it because it's such a short period of time. I found it was very easy to go to the gym knowing that you could do 20 minutes and get motivated to do the 20, but you, doing yeah. 40 minutes, you found it a lot, lot more difficult. Definitely doing 40 minutes was tough because once he'd finished, I was like, right, I've got the whole lot to do again. And our gym program over the 20 minutes was quite dense. There wasn't a huge amount of rest time because we wanted to do more endurance-based training rather than hypertrophy or muscle building. To give you a little idea of kind of the volume of work I was doing, we were doing 14 reps of deadlifts times say 50 kilos, doing that four times and then repeating that again. So it's like you know, 120 odd reps of deadlifts just for that one particular movement. So I was very fatigued to start with. Big difference here between the 20 and the 40 minute exercises that I'm not feeling like I've had a really good workout. So physically, I'm not tired. Mentally, I haven't felt like I've done enough. So that's a really big um, you know, contrast. Rossi's certainly feeling these 40 minutes um, and I'm not. I always felt like I wanted to do a bit more. So there was the, the physical side I felt good the mental side it felt bad and that was the big difference for me on the 20 minutes. And the 40 minutes for me I think was almost the opposite dare I say looking back at it. It was 40 minutes of yes my mind has certainly worked out and my body was kind of a bit too spent. That's what I didn't really like particularly as we started yeah. off working out. It was also quite annoying when I finished 20 minutes I just sat back and pretended to stretch and do something. Um, well that's what you normally do in the gym anyway. <laughs> I certainly think the advantage of 40 minute workouts where you do get to load up the larger muscle groups. Certainly with shoulder muscles, the rotations, the core, the smaller muscles, 
doing that eight times, eight sets, however we worked it out at. The smaller muscles did get quite fatigued because they're not used to that load and volume. The bigger lifts, deadlift, bench press. It was a little bit easier to manage, certainly with that volume of work for 40 minutes, but the smaller muscles over that time did get quite tired over the first few weeks of each training session. We're halfway through our 40 minutes versus 20 minutes. We've just finished our middle session. We're starting to see a difference in the stats as well now. The first four or five weeks, our stats on the body track machine were pretty much identical. Couldn't really yeah. say who was winning or who was losing, and now we're starting to see quite a change, to be honest, um, and that'll be reflected in the final results. It was actually probably the most identical results we've had to date over our studies we've done. The results, in short, is I reckon less than 5% increase in performance for the 40 minutes, which when you think the 40 minutes has doubled the 20 minutes for less than 5% uplift in performance, it's just not worth it. It's, it's really exciting to see the graphs side by side laid over each other. Because we're twins, we can genetically and directly compare both studies. And as you can see, they follow a very, very similar profile throughout the whole process. Particularly when we change the gym program at week six, you can then see our bodies reacting to that. So at the start, Ross started a kilo heavier than me and throughout the whole 12 weeks they tracked and trended exactly the same so there was no massive difference in our weight increase or decrease. Body fat for this 12 week study was slightly better for the 20 minutes. I think Hugo was slightly leaner or lower in fat percentage than I was on the 40 minute. Muscle mass again stayed the same and that was probably due to us eating fairly similar diets. We weren't eating a huge amount of calories, which is always efficient for us because the one thing we don't want to do is go off on an expedition and then drastically cut our calorie intake. For us, it's important to stay at around two and a half thousand calories per day intake so that when we're on an expedition, that reduction in calorie isn't a massive shock. So all in all, body stats that we were tracking throughout the 12 weeks stayed the same, they trended the same, there was no differences really in the overall statistics that we were tracking. The physiological tests at before and after, I would say I had a better improvement from the 20 minutes than Ross did from the 40. My gains on the 20 minutes were far greater than Ross's, which was surprising considering I only did half the amount well, of work. Well they were far greater, it was like 2 or 3% so it's not like far greater. I, I did 43 press ups, you did what, 30? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The physical studies we did after the 12 week study didn't really show one program benefiting over the other. It really just highlighted that there were certain gains on certain movements and certain decreased performances, but nothing that suggested 20 minutes was more efficient than 40 or 40 was better than 20. They both provided an increase generally across all the spectrum of the tests but there wasn't a measurable yes, go for 40 minutes because that's far more efficient. When we were working out, it was great because we knew that this study would certainly throw up a few surprises, which it has, and during the time that we were working out, we were always motivated by that because we've done so many other tests that have really thrown a spanner in the works going, well, why is everyone doing that when our result for this particular test has showed something different? I think the biggest surprise was how similar our graphs were. I know we're twins and we've done multiple studies, but looking at just the very start, how both our graphs and weight goes up, and then they do follow that same profile. That to me was amazing. Six weeks we started changing up, doing asymmetrical workout. Again, our bodies reacted in exactly the same way. If we had carried on this fitness program for another three months, six months a year, do we think it would change? I don't think it would at all, actually. I think three months is probably enough. If we started seeing small variations at the end and our lines and our data separating, then I would be more interested to carry on. But I think we haven't seen any differences at all that would suggest that we would find those differences in another six months. I think I would have potentially got higher fat levels compared to muscle mass, whereas you doing your 20 minutes, I certainly think you would have got leaner for sure. It just would have taken a little time, yeah. The big take home for us 
I think is the consistency. 20 minutes is far, far easier to execute every day if you want to find that consistency and that motivation. 40 minutes, you definitely found it a lot harder to motivate yourself and do that consistently. For me, knowing that I was working twice as hard, putting in twice as much effort, and yet the results weren't there, was, yeah, a little deflating. And I think now we've done the 12 week program and we've seen the results. For me, I just, yeah, I'm gonna struggle to do 40 minutes because I know there's no point in doing it. Yeah. From, from what we did on this particular test, doing 20 to 30 minutes max, that's it. Anything more than that, you're just wasting your time. Thank you for joining us and we'll look forward to another experiment in the near future.